Praise the Lord, saints. It's Thursday Night Live with Prayer Valley Family Worship Church. And we're glad to be coming from our home into your home or your mm-hmm. wherever you are. And I uh, want to speak to you a little bit tonight about what the Lord has dropped in my spirit. And uh, before we do, though, Pastor Beth has a few announcements to make. Uh, upcoming events for the church and uh, some of the things that we have going on in our, in Amen. our, in our ministry. Uh, first of uh, we have Women of the Valley, which is coming up this Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, it's, of course, at the church, 14172 Avon Avenue, and you don't want to miss it. We have a... It's in Lathrop, the city of Lathrop. Yes, we have a blast. We have a lot of fun. We love the fellowship, the food, and, of course, the word. So we really have a good time. So, yes, it's in Lathrop. And then this Sunday, we have a special speaker... Uh, Pastor Trini Lance will be speaking, and I am excited about that. So, um, Amen, I'm excited, and I won't be there to hear it, uh, but I, I will be listening. I know Amen. she has a word, boy, because she's, I, I can just, she's been telling she me has she has a, a good word. word. Amen. She does have a word. So invite somebody. You don't want to miss this Sunday. Um, we have our Resurrection Sunday coming up, April 17th. Pastor has an amazing word. I do. You don't want to miss it. We have communion. Um, the kids are going to do their Easter egg hunt. And let me tell you something. Our children, they, we have a great children director. They have a lot of fun. She has a lot of things planned for them. Invite your friends. Invite your loved ones. You do not want to miss this. I love staying busy for the Lord. Amen. It's really important. We have a new ministry um, called uh, Hands in the Valley. And April 23rd, if you have a heart uh, to serve, you need to join them. Amen. Um, I can give you more information. Sister Desiree that runs it. Um, they're going to be meeting uh, the 23rd of April um, at the church at 10 a.m. And then they're going to go out and about and minister to the lost. Amen. So it's really important that if you do have a desire and you really want to go out and minister, this is a great ministry. Amen. So these are all our um uh, ministries we have coming up for the month of april amen amen praise god excited about what god is doing and i'm excited about this weekend for our men our men's retreat uh and uh sounds kind of crazy but we're going to be in the city of las vegas sin city for the uh for the altar conference and we're i'm i'm going to worship with maverick city i can tell you right now that's that's what I'm going for, so I can just worship God. And amen. I mean, we have one of the greatest worship teams this side of heaven, so I'm kind of spoiled. Uh, but I believe I'll really be able to enter in. I'm looking forward to spending some time with the guys. Um, yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I hope more people have tuned in. Uh, we we have a pretty good viewing on Thursday night. Um, but I want to I want to I want to say th- some things to you today. Pastor Beth and I were speaking to each other. And I said, you know, it's amazing to me how many people really uh, don't want to, uh, they don't want to invest the time to really serve anymore. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they like n- names and positions and they like the, the uh, you know, they like the, the thought of being a, uh, an elder or hierarchy or whatever, right. uh, but they don't really want to serve. It's, it's a rarity. Now, Prayer Valley Church, man, I'll tell you, we're, we're blessed. We have we people that serve. Uh, we have people that are in, and, and, and don't get me wrong, Prayer Valley has a, a great body of believers who are more than willing to get yes. things done. Uh, but I'm just talking in general. You, you, you don't see a lot of people that are willing to go the extra mile or to really invest the extra time. Yes. Uh, time is, is something that, you know, we're supposed to give God our first fruits. And yes. all, time, all time belongs to God. Right. But it, it, you would think that, that we would see more of, I remember, you know, being so involved in everything that was going on. Uh, and I think that a lot of times people, uh, you know, they, they want the pastors or assistant pastors or, or the leadership to do, they want them to, yes. to do everything and to serve them. Right. I mean, churches that have a, a huge employed staff, uh, those people work their behinds off 
to serve everybody, but people don't really get it that they're there to serve also. Yes. Amen. Amen. But when we were talking today, I was saying that, that uh, there's such a, a need for people to learn how to serve. So I want to read some scripture to you uh, before we go any further. And I want you to pay close attention to uh, what the Lord has dropped in my spirit just today. I just, I, I, I just started getting this today. This is not one of them three-week things that God's been dealing with me about. He just started and dropped this in my spirit today. So turn your Bibles with me, if you have your Bible, to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4. Uh, and I want to read verses 11 through 16. So I'm going to read it in the NIV so that you get an understanding because uh, many times when we say he, people get confused with like they think that something that God is doing in the in the in the alphaness of God, uh, you know, the, 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 and, and they don't realize that Christ had established the church. That's right. In his alphaness, right? But, yes. So, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers to equip his people for works of service. Yes. So that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. I'm going to read that again. So Christ himself gave to the church mm -hmm. the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for the works of service. Everything that we minister and do is to equip people for service. Yes. Not so that they can become rich and prosper and right. so that their bodies are healed or their mind is not psychotic or but it's to equip them. All of that stuff comes with it though. Right. You know, but but uh to equip his people for work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, babies tossed to and fro, back and forth by the waves and, the, and, and blown here and there by every uh, wind of teaching or, or doctrine that comes along. And by the, we won't be tossed to and fro and, and uh, by, by the craftiness of, of men in their deceit and their scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we grow, Yes. right? We right. will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up. How? Builds, builds itself, itself up. I said, what builds. builds itself up in love as each part does its work, as each part does its work. Good work. That's a call to service. It's a call of responsibility. It's nobody's job. It's our job as pastors and evangelists and prophets. And it's our job uh, to equip you. Amen? Amen. To equip you. Yes right to f to furnish you with the tools and the word and the, the 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 anointing but it's your job to grow it's your job to yes. be get built up it's your job so that and, and it's you must do your part and if you're not doing your part you're never going to make it and i see people all the time that are hit and miss hit and miss in and out up and down you know depressed and they're spiritually bipolar. Yes. They're, they're on cloud nine right. on one Sunday and then three weeks in a row you read on Facebook, I felt like suicide today. Those are demons and devils that yes. torment people. Yes. And they're, if they don't apply themselves and, right. and if, they don't, if they don't begin to get in and, and begin to serve and, and be accountable and right. be teachable and be available, they're right. never going to succeed. They're going to deal with this stuff all their life. Yeah, you're right. Amen. Amen. So... The Lord really began to deal with me. And, 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 and I was speaking today to Pastor Beth about what we need to be doing along with what we are already doing. Right. Amen. Amen. I said that, listen, you know, uh, people have become lethargic. 
Yes. This, this, this last couple of years have let people off the hook. They don't feel like they have to commit. They don't feel like they have to be faithful. They don't feel like they have to do this and do that. We have people that are rebellious against joining that church or joining this or being that or this and that. And it's all just a bunch of hogwash. The church is Christ's idea. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors yes. and teachers to equip That's right. his people for yes. the works of service. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He did that. That's talking about the church, man. All right. So when well, you got something bad to say about the church, any church that is a church that believes in Jesus Christ, that is a, uh, you know, that's preaching the word of God, uh, that's not some false, you know, doctrine. Right. You got something to say, take it to God. Amen. Amen. So uh, I wonder how many listening to me right now have given any serious thought, like really serious thought to what the purpose of their, their life is and, and how... You know, you think about what the purpose of your life is. When you read stuff like this, you kind of know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then I think about, well, if you, if you understand that the purpose of your life is to glorify God. Right. Right? And for Him to be, glori and for him to be glorified through everything you do. Right? He hello. I said to glorify God and for Him to be glorified. You know, well, I glorify God all the time. Yeah, but is He glorified through what you do? through your works of faith? Wow. Is he glorified, right? Right. Through your deeds. Are you applying yourself through your service? Is he being served? Are you serving God in such a manner that God is getting glory? There you go. Amen? Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. And I wonder how many people actually have given serious thought to what the purpose of their life is and, and how to fulfill that purpose. Like, what do I need to do to fulfill, you know, my purpose in life? I mean, we, ha we all have good intentions. And I said a few weeks ago that the graveyards are full of good intentions, right? Yes. They're full of people that had potential. Right. Amen. But if you, it's, it does no good to have potential or have intentions if you do nothing with it. Amen. True. See, we judge ourselves off, off of our intentions. Like, well, I planned on going. Well, I planned on praying. But really, down in your heart of hearts, you didn't. I mean, maybe occasionally you did. I planned on praying for them. I planned on visiting them. I planned on hunting them down and not letting them run away from God. I planned on investing time. I planned on, I had good intentions, but we judge ourselves on our intentions. Yes. But God judges us on our actions. Right. On, God judges us on not just, you know, the intent of the heart, but what the heart actually does. Amen? Amen. If that were true, every one of us would go to hell because there are many times that we our, our heart's intention is focused upon sin, but we don't do it. Hello? So, But if God judges on our intentions, we'd all go to hell. That's the truth. Many people, their heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Yes. And, and if we were judged off of that, but we're not. We're not. We're, we're, we're our faith that it, when it's applied and worked and used is counted to us as righteousness. Yes. Amen? Amen. Even though we also have to live righteous, mm -hmm. the, we have to be right before God. And we do that through salvation, the blood of Christ, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So our culture and, and life in general is filled with distractions and activities that appear to be very fulfilling and pleasurable at time from entertainment uh, even to work, right. uh, to just resting or, or laying around or feeling the need to be lazy and all that stuff. But, but I've never seen more people who think that they need rest than I do today. And the Bible has a scripture that says we must labor to enter into his rest. You want to look that scripture up for me? Labor to enter into his rest. I can tell you how to do it. You just go, Siri. Scripture on labor to enter into his rest. <laughs> Amen. And he'll tell you where it's at. We must labor to enter into his rest. Amen. Because the rest of the world, and I'm not talking about the rest. I'm talking about rest that the world has to give is not what you need. What you need is peace from the Lord. Most people are consumed in, in, in just trying to survive this world. And they're just trying to survive mindset. 
just trying to survive mindset. Uh, the I'm too busy scenario. I don't have time to devote more time. Um, where are we looking? Hebrews 4, 11. Hebrews 4 and 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Let us, therefore, be diligent to enter that rest, his rest. We labor. Hebrews 4 and 11. Yes. Amen. Amen. How could I not know that? Well, I, I knew it, but it just I had a, a brain fart. How's that? Amen. Yeah, I said it. We get those. Um, so... Because this life and this world we live in has made it way too easy for us to forget that we are living on this earth for God's glory. That we're living on this earth for God's glory. You were created for God's glory. You have been saved and redeemed for God's glory. And you may think that it's for you and for you to have a, a own a piece of land and have a bank account and you know enjoy your fishing trips or your Disneyland trips or but you were created for God's glory. Amen. And when you realize not merely for your happiness but for God's glory. When you realize that happiness is based upon things that happen to you. That's why it's called happiness, happenings, yes. happiness is yes. based upon things that happen to you or for you or around you. But the joy of the Lord surpasses understanding. The peace of God surpasses understanding. Amen. Because it's a spiritual thing that God wants to give us. So when we speak on purpose, we must understand that it's for God's will and God's plan, not for our own will and our own plan. In fact, I'm going to try to learn to teach myself not to say this is my purpose. I'm going to try to teach that I am in God's purpose. purpose. Amen. That's Amen. Because I was created for God's purpose. That's you right. were created for God's yes. purpose. Amen. And if it's about your purpose, hello, I'm sure Satan has one for you. But God has one for you. Yes. Amen. God yes. has a purpose. It's God's purpose. Yes. Right? So when we speak on purpose, let's remember that it's not for our own will and our own plan, but it's for God's plan. God made you and made the purpose for you. Now, I don't know if he made the purpose, then the plan, but I believe that God had a purpose, and in yes. that purpose, he made you Amen. for it. And as Christians, we better start getting about our Father's business, man, because time is running short, and people are splitting hell wide open, and people are passing away and falling away, and people are giving up on being steadfast and unmovable. The yes. world is offering people so much, and there are so much false doctrine. There is so many heretics. There is so many lies. There are yes. so many things to turn people away. Now we have a now we have this this uh, thing. It's been around for a while, but we have this universalism that people believe that there's one God but many religions and the Buddha and 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 Muhammad and and Krishna and 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 uh, uh, you know all of all of them you know. Jehovah's Witness and, and Latter-day Saints that were all serving the same God. And I can tell you this, that's a lie. There are false gods. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus that's Christ. Right. Amen. And, and the, the universalist mindset uh, is rampant right now. We have people that have walked away from church recently that have a universal mindset. Yes. Right? They've yes. been turned over to universal mindset. Ooh. Uh, some of the large religions in the world have failed because of that. Yes. Um, we've seen some of the uh, churches that were back in Tulsa at one time completely dissolve, r running thousands and thousands of people because they, they turned to universalism where they, they didn't want to preach to their, uh, to their, they didn't want to preach Jesus Christ right. to their uh, Buddhist friends, uh, not Buddhist, but their uh, East Indian Punjabi friends. They didn't want to, preach Jesus Christ to them. They wanted to say, well, they're good people and they walk in peace, and the, which is all true. They are good people and they walk in peace. But you know what? The truth of the matter is, is that without the blood of Jesus, it's true, right? Right. We can do all the good that we want to do, but it's the blood of Jesus that saves, saves us, us. That's right. and prepares our, our, our covering to prepares us and makes us uh, be able to enter into heaven, into the presence of God. So God has endowed us with spiritual gifts from healing to helps, 
There's helps is one people don't want to hear about, right? Right. The ministry of helps. People want to hear about prophecy and praying, you know, tongues and people being raised from the dead. And they want to hear about all that, but they don't want to hear about the ministry of helps, the ministry of giving. Right. Right. Amen. They don't, they don't, you don't never hear nobody that goes to see, you know, uh, John, John, the evangelist who preaches the, about the ministry of helps. You hear people that flock to the ministry of healing, you right. know, the things Amen. like that. So from, from, from the God given ability to, to encourage others, uh, to visitation. I mean, we hardly have anybody that wants to do visitation anymore. I know, I know. You know, when we were with West Coast, that was part of our job. Yes. We had to go visit one family one time a week. Do you remember? Yes. We had church night and Thursday night. And during that period of time, I worked a job, drove truck, and we had to go visit a family one time a week. Amen. That was part of our, right? Yes. We can't hardly get people to do anything anymore. No. I mean, we, you know, people run from people that I don't want to spend time with. That. I don't want to talk. I don't want to make friends. I don't want to this. But from, from the God-given ability to do these things, see, working, uh, God wants to, God wants to use you, but you may not be the one that God uses in the working of miracles. You may be the giver, Amen. right? Amen. You may be the, the one that God uses as the giver. Yes. And it seems like churches are full of takers, but not many givers. I mean, I can go through and just look at things when we do our annual books and things like that. And I can just, and sometimes I'm ashamed for people. I'm ashamed for people. I'm ashamed. Like they take advantage of the church and they take advantage of the house of God. And they, they think they're taking advantage of things like the Holy Spirit, but yet they don't, they're, they're not, they, they don't give at all. They never, they, they're not givers whatsoever. Right. 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 They just not givers. So it seems like the churches are full of takers. Help me, feed me, raise me up, encourage me, empower me, serve me. And when you don't, I'm going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yep. But where are the use me Christians? Where are the ones that are really use me Christians? Like really use me Christians. Yeah. Now you need to, to, to put a check on yourself if you're out there listening to me saying, use me, Lord, I'll go, I'll, I'll be usable. Will you really? Because, you know, what will you be usable for? What will you be usable for? If you say, Lord, I'll go use me. And the Lord says, I want you to go, uh, you know, clean the toilets. I want you to go minister to the elderly at the rest home. Right. I want you to. I want you to, you know, go to the prisons. Yeah, something yeah. like Pastor Mike is getting ready to start yeah. going to the prisons and Thomas Ford. Yeah. yeah. Uh, amen. Just, I want yeah. you to do this or I want you to do that. Most people, I mean, Pastor Mike and Thomas Ford are, are very qualified, but most people really aren't qualified to preach. They think they are, right. but they're not. Most people aren't, but they can qualify for all these other things. Yes. Amen. Ministry of helps and visitation. Yes. And, and, uh, you know, ministries of giving, things right. like that. They, 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 but they don't, they just, uh, empower me, God, you know, and, 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 you know, it's all about serve me. Amen. It's all about me. It's all about what I can get. I mean, like, I, I wonder sometimes how many people are really there to praise God and give God glory and worship God, or if they're there trying to get something for themselves, like, a, I need a breakout. I need a breakthrough. I I need this and I need that and and you know meet me at my point of need God and you know he's a good God and he's a gracious God and he's a merciful God and right. he always shows up the Holy Spirit shows up but I can tell you that a lot of people live off the anointing of other people yeah true I'm anointed you're true. anointed people are anointed you know the hand, brother and sister hands anointed the worship team's anointed yes and pastors our assistants are anointed we have yes. people in the crowd that are anointed but we also have people that are living off the anointing of everyone else they're just not willing to press in for themselves they're not not willing they won't even give themselves talk about giving they won't even give themselves to god so so you need to put a check on yourself and see if if you're the one saying you know, use me, God, use me, God, use me, God, yes. because I ain't talking about being used in the glory realm. Right. I'm talking about you being used in the muck and the mire. Amen. I'm not talking about being used in the glory realm of, you know, look what I can do. 
I'm talking about those that are willing to, you know, I, I, I've never really felt like my ministry when I was called by God was to reach down and pull people out of the mud. I always felt like it was my job to get down in the mud and push them up. Amen. 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 So I'm talking Amen. about being used in God's purpose, not your purpose, in God's glory, not your glory. Uh, like going after the lost and missing and backslidden. And I'm talking about being available in the midnight hour. I'm preaching about learning yeah. to serve the body, not preach to the body or prophesy to the body or rebuke the body. I'm talking about serving the body. Amen. We get people that we get them in there, start serving, and they start looking at this. I don't like the way they do that. I don't like the way they do that. Oh, I don't like the way they do that. Oh, I don't like being told what to do. I don't like being told this or told that or said this or said. I don't want to be used this way and that. I want to be used, but I want to be used my way. And then they burn rubber when you tell them, you know what? We can't use you that way. Right. right. Amen. Amen. You need to understand that the church is edified when we serve each other. Amen. That's it right there. You understand that? Yes. When we serve each other. When we use our spiritual gifts to to that that co inside with God's purpose in us, then it brings edification to the body. It helps us grow. Amen. As individuals and corporately. It's not your purpose, it's his purpose in you for you. Amen. If we are ever going to attain the unity of the faith that moves the hand of God, we must come into his will freely and, and, and absorbing of our responsibilities, being obedient to that. We must strive to achieve spiritual maturity more than seeking a gift or a spiritual, you know, enlightening or whatever. We got we to gotta strive for maturity. Amen. Today I see many that aren't willing to hold fast to Christ when Christ re requires more of their will. They're only willing to go so far, but when Christ requires more of their will, they get their eyes on people. That's, the, that's it right there. I tell people all the time, yeah. I, I say, you know, I, I've said to the Lord many times, God, you want me to say this word, but it's my face. I'm the one they get mad at. I'm the one they think is is you know, saying this and doing that, or I, they look at me and think, oh, well, who, are, who is he to tell me what to do, right? Because they just, they can't see past the flesh into what God is doing. Most people serve their own agenda, and then they want to call it Christianity. Uh, but, you know, they want to serve their own flesh. And here's the problem. We're supposed to be dying to our flesh. Amen. 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 I'm sorry I preached the no, whole sermon. No, that's okay. That's no, that's good work, Pastor. Amen. Keep going. It's just the truth. Amen. Most people serve their own agenda and call it Christianity. Right. Until Christianity asks them to to die. Right. <laughs> Ooh. Right to their flesh. I mean, they serve. The, they want to call it Christianity. Tell Christianity, yeah, I don't feel like going today. I'm tired. I, I'm 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 feeling just relax today. I don't, I don't want to go to church today. And man, we got people that, that, that are faithful and they're, they're, they're ride or die when it comes to their commitment to the Lord and to being in the house of God. And then we got people that hit and miss and every other three or four weeks. And then they wonder why their life is in disarray. There you go. That's it. Amen. Yeah. Cause they can't serve. They just can't serve God. Mm -mm. They just can't serve him. They want they, it's a good idea, but they just can't serve him. Right. My challenge to you right now is that you learn to serve God. Amen. And do it wholeheartedly. He don't want no half-assed Christians. Do it with your whole heart all the way. Go all the way. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Yes. Amen. I've crossed the line and I'm not turning back. Amen. Amen. Listen, guys, I love you. And I can't wait to be in service with you. This Sunday, Pastor Trini Lance is going to be bringing a powerful word. And she is uh, so articulate and so anointed. And you guys are going to have a wonderful time. Be in church, 9 a.m., 14172 Avon Avenue in the beautiful city of Lathrop, California. Amen? Amen. God bless.